Hello and welcome. My name is Michelle Trott and today I will provide an overview of viruses and virus-like particles, including their characteristics, production and considerations for isolation, purification and physical characterization. I would like to acknowledge my colleague and EV researcher Priscilla Dorosingarenko for preparing most of this presentation. Viruses are incredibly diverse nanoparticles which vary in their genome size, transmission routes, the tissues they infect and whether they are cleared by the host or cause persistent infection. They are found in a wide range of sizes with dimensions varying from around 20 nanometers to 1.5 micrometers. Viruses have a fairly typical structure. They consist of one type of nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA, which is surrounded by a protein capsid made of numerous subunits. And they sometimes have a host cell derived lipid layer called an envelope. A virus will depend strictly on its cellular host for replication, as it uses a cell's energy and machinery for macromolecule synthesis. Virus-like particles, or VLPs, are a non-infective version of viruses. They cannot replicate inside the cell because they do not have the genetic material to command macromolecule synthesis. While they are engineered as vaccines, they can also occur naturally as byproducts of viral production. VLPs are produced by an assembly of capsid proteins and sometimes the lipid envelope. VLPs have been bioengineered to present heterologous antigens from diverse infectious agents, leading to the effective stimulation of innate and adaptive immune responses. As VLPs cannot replicate, higher doses are needed to achieve effects similar to that of virus-based treatments. Viruses and VLPs play a central role in human well-being and their effects are both beneficial and detrimental. Virology research involves the study of viral structure and composition, as well as studies of infection mechanisms, immune responses, and transmission pathways. Within diagnostics, there is a need to isolate, enrich, and identify viruses in a range of biofluids using different analytical tools. Viruses are also relevant to therapeutic applications, as viruses can be recognised, taken up and processed by specific host cells. In this way, they can deliver exogenous genetic material, such as DNA or RNA, to induce a cellular genetic modification to confer some benefit in the disease context. The use of viruses and VLPs has also been critical to one of the greatest successes in public health, and that is vaccine development. Due to their versatile, bioengineerable characteristics, Viruses have enabled the prevention and control of many viral diseases and non-viral infectious diseases throughout history. As mentioned earlier, viruses require a cellular host to replicate. Therefore, their production requires the use of cell culture systems. And this depends on the virus type. Enveloped viruses acquire their envelope as they bud off from the host cell membrane. They exit host cells via natural release and are isolated in vitro by collecting the supernatant from virus harboring cultured cells. Most non-enveloped viruses exit their hosts via cell lysis. They are isolated in vitro by culturing and lysing virus harboring cells, which may be adherent or in a suspension. After that, the virus can be purified from the cell lysate supernatant. As cell-released viruses may have significant similarities to other cell-released particles, such as extracellular vesicles, isolation protocols must be considered carefully. For VLP production, capsid proteins are normally encoded in plasmids, which are incorporated into a cellular expression system using bacteria, yeast, insect cells, or mammalian cells. Once protein subunits have been produced, VLP assembly can occur inside the cellular expression system or outside of it. When VLP assembly occurs outside of the cell, this is referred to as in vitro assembly. In vitro VLP assembly may involve a form of dialysis in an assembly buffer, and it has the advantage of being mostly free from other cell-derived contaminants. After this process, viruses and VLPs are essentially nanoparticles in suspension. As a result, their isolation methods are like that of other biological nanoparticles, such as extracellular vesicles. Here, there are a few techniques to choose from, but they are limited in their level of reproducibility. This is the case for ultracentrifugation, density gradient centrifugation, and microfiltration slash ultrafiltration. 
In contrast, size exclusion chromatography has become highly popular for the isolation of viruses and VLPs, as it is reproducible, rapid, cost-effective, and requires little effort. It is also a clean approach in that it doesn't involve high G-forces or the addition of complicating reagents. Isom's range of QEV columns are based on size exclusion chromatography and are typically used with the Automatic Fraction Collector, or AFC, to provide a standardised and reproducible approach to isolation. QEV columns are available to suit a wide range of loading volumes, which is particularly relevant where large-scale purification is required, for example in vaccine or therapeutic settings. Columns are available in two resin types, each of which differ in their optimal particle size range, as shown here. Regarding the QEV sample input, there is a broad range of columns suited to different needs. There are also guidelines for pre-concentration starting volumes for virus or VLP containing samples. In this example, QEV columns were used to isolate a lentivirus, which is an enveloped virus sized between 80 and 100 nanometers. Here, the authors aimed to develop a purification strategy for viral particles in clinical applications and identified one fraction that was most enriched with lentiviral particles. Purity was assessed using several methods, including protein quantification, particle count, reverse transcriptase, activity assay, and lentiviral capsid immunoblotting. In this example, a group investigated the role of EVs in the infection of hepatitis B, an enveloped 42 nanometer virus. To do so, they removed hepatitis B, leaving just EVs behind. The graph here indicates the significant removal of virus particles following QEV purification, as represented by particles smaller than 50.75 nanometers. The accurate quantification of viral particles is crucial across different aspects of virology. When viruses or VLPs are used as vaccines or therapeutics, for example, quantification is required for quality control and reliable yield measurements. In contrast with optical methods, tunable resistive pulse sensing, or TRPS, uses the temporal resistance increase caused by the passage of particles across a nanopore. For TRPS size measurements, there is a linear relationship between the particle volume and magnitude of the resistive pulse generated. Therefore, particle diameters can be determined with high accuracy. Similarly, zeta potential can be measured for each individual particle by inspecting pulse duration, while concentration is derived from blockade frequency. TRPS provides single particle measurements to deliver true particle size distributions and can precisely resolve polydispersed samples. TRPS has been used to obtain precise measurements of particle size distribution for formulation stability studies. In this context, TRPS can be used as a tool to assess viral stability over time and under different conditions. In this particular example, it was used in a study of Ebola virus VLPs intended for vaccines. Many biological interactions between nanoparticles or between the nanoparticle and recipient cell depend on the particle's charge or zeta potential. Zeta potential affects the tendency of virus and VLP preparations to aggregate or remain in suspension, and can influence cellular uptake efficiency and cytotoxicity to recipient host cells. Determining zeta potential can therefore be used to guide approaches to formulation optimization. In this example, different virion preparations are characterized by zeta potential. The two lentivirus preparations are clustered together as represented by the blue and cream coloured data points. In contrast, pink data points represent a herpes virus preparation, which is more negatively charged. In summary, Izon provides integral solutions to each field working with viruses and VLPs, and provides a wide range of QEV isolation columns suited to different needs and processing requirements. If you have any questions about how Izon can support your virus or VLP work, make sure you fill out the contact form on our website or email support at izon.com.